And I just want to hit on, uh, obviously, one of the most famous matches in pro wrestling history, and that is you versus your protege, Larry Zbysko. And obviously, we've spoken to Larry Zbysko, and he is just obviously just glowing talking about you. You're his childhood hero. And the story of your, you know, your feud and the whole, just it was, it's the absolute perfect way to build uh, how you got, get a guy to the next level. And Larry Zabisco and you at Shea Stadium in one of the most memorable matches uh, in the history of the business. But the thing that I love the most about the story, not only is the match, but everything that was going on in New York that evening, and you guys still were able to draw the house that you were able to draw and to still put on one of the most iconic matches in wrestling history, culminating one of the greatest feuds in wrestling history. Well, yeah, that that was uh, yeah. What what you just said it was very true. The Yankees were playing Baltimore, and they were a playoff type thing. You know, it was that time of the year where they were, uh, you know, they were playing. Uh, I forget if it was uh, for first place or what, but it was very important. And they sold out Yankee Stadium, and then the Pittsburgh Steelers here. They were playing the New York Giants in New York, um, uh, and I think it was an exhibition game. And and they had a packed house, and here we were in Shea Stadium, and we had if if you, you it was a packed house because if all the seats in the bleachers weren't if there were any empties there, and I don't think there were too many, but keep in mind that we also had the the, the field the the floor, so you know you know what I'm saying. So if you took those people from the floor, put them in the bleacher, we I think we had a I'm pretty sure we had a full house. Uh, and uh, and again, you want to hear the explosion of the people when we both for the first for Larry were they the booze were, were unbelievable, and then of course uh, for me when I came in the people you know they wanted they wanted me to kill Larry you know, and uh, and so then you know then this was by the way was at the, at the end of my career, uh, Larry really felt like. Uh, he was being held back that he wasn't getting the let's call it the push that he was dreaming of and hoping for and this uh this really uh, did that for him because I'll tell you you talk about Shea Stadium, but we also were in a garden, but here in Pittsburgh, we had three return matches in, and in boston and in fact, we were in the capitol center in in um, uh, Washington, which was huge, that held 24,000 people. And then the Civic Center in Baltimore, they were, all, they were smaller, were all about 18,000 people. We were at 1 o'clock in the afternoon in, uh, in uh, the Capitol Center in Washington, sold it out, and then we came to Baltimore that night and sold it out. And believe me, they weren't that far apart, those two buildings. So that's how hot that thing was. Everywhere it went, it, it turned them away. I mean, it really turned people away. It was a, it was probably, probably the hottest feud uh, that I'd been involved with, and I'd been in, in quite a few, you know, with different guys. But uh, that was uh, the hottest one of all, I think. Is it is it satisfying to know the career that Larry Zbysko went on to have and to also carry that living legend moniker for quite some time after he uh, he's you know has not hid the story that he was you know a big fan of you growing up and peering through the hedges to, uh, to get your attention? But did you ever think that Larry Zbysko would go on to have the career that he ended up having? Well, you know, I, you never take anything for granted. Uh, you never know because you're at the mercy of promoters. If they uh, care, if uh, what you like and everything else, you, your talent as a talent, I mean, they might give you the break. If they, I've seen a lot of great, great talent throughout my life in the business, that I felt that what a shame they they were strictly like preliminaries all the time, and there was I saw some great, great talent that I believed, honestly believed, that had they been given the opportunity, they could have been great headliners. Uh, it's hard to understand uh, uh, why uh, they weren't seen that way by a lot of promoters. I don't know, but uh, I felt that I, I certainly did. So, so you never know uh, what what can happen. And with Larry, I knew he, he, he was a terrific talent. I had worked out with him a lot when I'd come home to Pittsburgh. You know, I would get to with him and work out with him. 
And uh, he had a, it was a good amateur. He wrestled in a high school here called Allegheny High that had one of the greatest uh, wrestling programs in the country. I mean, really great. And uh, and he stood out in that school. And then he went to college and wrestled. So uh, he, he had talent. He started out, but he made it the transition from that amateur to professional. He did it great. And um, like I said, I worked out with him when every opportunity I had. But the problem was I wasn't coming home a whole lot. But I was coming home more at that because, remember, that was on the second reign when I took the belt. And as I explained to you, that uh, Vince made me a deal where I would only average a couple shows uh, um, a week. So that gave me more time. And I was spending more time at home. And I did spend more time, you know, working out with him. But uh, no, I, did I think it was going to be as big as it was? I, I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't remember exactly at the time what I thought, but I thought it would be good. But I, I didn't think they would be that big. And Larry went on to become uh, in Vern Gagne's territory, the AWA. He became the champion there and other places that he went to. And then he, he became a, a, a commentator, color commentator with the WCW. So I think that he, he went on to have a pretty darn good career.